Welcome back, radio entrepreneurs, listeners, and fans. I'm producer Jillian King, and I'm excited to introduce you all to part two of the fall 2024 FBA Family Business Panel Discussion, Revealing the Secrets to Family Business Success, 2024, Building Your Great Family Business. Next, I will introduce our panelists and the moderator for this discussion. We are joined today by Stephen Wilchins of Wilchins, Cosentino, and Novins, Richard Hershen of Gray, Gray, and Gray, Christopher Perry of Northern Trust Wealth Management, New England, Larry Post of Post Properties, The Point, Bodwaves, and Meridian Realty Group, Valerie Post of Post Properties, The Point, Bodwaves, and Meridian Realty Group, and Samantha Post of Meridian Realty Group. Welcome all. Last but not least, Radio Entrepreneur's host and founder of Mage LLC, Jeffrey Davis. Welcome, Jeffrey. I will now hand the conversation over to you. Thank you, Jillian. Thank you to everybody. Uh, thank you to the sponsors of Radio Entrepreneurs like Greg Gray and Gray and Wilchins Costantino. Uh, I want to get back into where we ended our last segment on the transition. Do you think it's important to gain experience outside the family business before you come into the family business? I actually do. Um, our son, my son helps me with the real estate. He's actually taken a little part of our real estate and turned it into a, a business that's actually become a pretty big business. Uh, he he went to Cornell and worked in the hotel industry for about 10 years. Sammy was a CPA, has an MBA, and she's worked in uh, both public accounting uh, as, well as, uh, uh, as well as public industry. So I, I think having outside experience adds, a, adds value to their skill set and helps us. So I, I don't know, Val, what's your feeling? Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, no question about it. And, um, I think you have to under all the kids think we're tough bosses. And once they went to go work for other organizations, they realized maybe we were just <laughs> standard as far as how to how to work. And I, I think they thought we were slave drivers to start with. Samantha, you want to get this is your chance. Take your shot. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I think, they, yes, it was, it was, as I said, it was my first job in college. I think a freshman in college was working for my mom. I thought it was the hardest job of my life. Um, it's still, she probably was still my toughest boss, but I had some, I have had some other tough bosses. So it's, it's all good learning experiences, but she's you definitely know, been my best boss. One of the things I want to point out is Sammy, Sammy asked for a car, I guess, at the end of her freshman year. And Val said, well, uh, why don't you go work for a, a friend of ours who owned a little boutique real estate place? Just rent our apartments because all our rentals come due August 1. Rent our apartments. You'll make enough money. Mm -hmm. And then Val, uh, Sammy convinced Val to work together. The two of them teamed up. <clears throat> they made about $30,000 for that for that summer. Sammy bought uh, a little car with that. And Val said she was going to be all through. And then someone in the office said, you know, to Val, what are you going to do now that you know, Sammy's going back to school? She said, I don't know. And they said, you want to start a real estate business. So Sammy's summer job turned Val into this, you know, the, the, the not only the property management business, but also, also the retail residential brokerage business of which there's four offices now. That's turned into a big business. So some of our businesses are just... It, it it wasn't a strategic plan for us to do. It's just us doing stuff that just bubbled up and, and kept kept growing. So I'm going to focus on Sam a little bit again. Uh, so you'll put you in the forefront. You know, one of the things I have these discussions with people throughout my consulting career is managing upward. And I'm sure there's been a transition from you being the daughter to being to learning how to exert your own authority in the business and your parents adapting to you becoming the leader. Can you talk a little bit about that, that experience, that process of maybe becoming the boss and how you've dealt with it, how you think they've dealt with it? Sure. As I said, um, Valerie, she's still very much involved in the business. So I've gotten to see a lot about how she's kind of helping with those relationships. relationships too. So I've learned a lot from her or girl who's been working with her, I think for about 15 years, Jillian, who I've really learned a lot from how their management styles, kind of how, what they, how they manage a family to on the do it. And then the business. So I think kind of just watching them has been a great example. And then 
having that opportunity, as I said, I have managed people. This is not my first job out of college. I have managed people in other at other companies, but it's been a good experience where you people management is it's a different skill set too. As I said, I was more doing accounting, but I did have I did have to manage people. And I've really learned a lot from them, but I still I still have a, a lot to learn. I don't think I'm a perfect boss, or I think we we all can keep learning from everyone. Also, though, Sammy, don't you think we manage as a team, the three of us, and we're all on the same page? We you know, yeah, we, we yeah, make yeah. sure that you you don't they don't go to one person because somebody's easier than the other. Exactly. I think we haven't. She as. I think Valerie would like to step back more, but she's still, she's there 24 seven still. So we still have her as a great, as she said, we, we can still use her. She has, she has a, she has a numerous amount of skill sets. We can still value, we can still utilize that right now to help us. So Val and Larry, how do you deal with differences of opinion as you move your businesses forward? I, I just say happy yes. Happy life, yeah. happy life, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, You're related to my wife. So uh, I, I actually would like to answer this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I always tell people I have not seen a movie that I've wanted to see in 40 some years. <laughs> Larry, Larry has an opinion of if you ask eight times, you can change a no to a yes. <laughs> So this is how my life is gone. They'll say, you want to go to the movies? And I'll say, yeah, that sounds great. Go, what do you want to see? And I'll say, oh, you know, I'd like to go see Barbie. And he says, there's a really good, um, there's a really good military uh, movie. And I said, I don't really feel like going to a military movie, Larry. And he says, okay, what do you want to see? And I said, let's go see Barbie. He says, you know, but this this, this military movie got, you know, got 87 on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> After you go through eight times, you just say, that's fine. Just, just do what you want to do. <laughs> And I think that's how we've gotten through um, who, who, who gets to lead everything. Oh, he wears you down. That's good. I yeah. better take notes. <laughs> the odds go from 80% against you to 80% in your favor after the fifth ask. So what would you tell Just, your kids about making decisions, though, Let Val and Larry, on helping you make decisions that you disagree as, as you start to wind down? I don't really see that. I, I think a lot of the decisions are common sense. So uh, Jason in the real estate has a way better handle in real estate than I do. So I, I defer to him. I'm, I'm, there's, there's, it's very rare that, that he says something that I, I disagree with. Val, I don't know what your, what your stuff, what you're thinking. The, the kids are very techy. And if you saw how Larry keeps track of his expenses on his real estate, on a, like a one sheet of paper with really small writing on it. And then you look at some of the Excel sheets that Jason produces or what the Samantha produces. I think we understand that, you know, the world is going quickly and the kids are going to do great and they're going to, they're, they're, they're going to overshadow us when the time comes. You know, we've got, we've got the experience, but they've got, you know, they, they, they've got the high tech stuff. Between AI and everything else, it's just it's, it's just a different world out there, mm -hmm. and the families have to adjust on that. I'm I'm curious on the on the technology front. Com family communication is evolving as technology evolves, and I'm curious about how you talk with you know kind of communicate with the family about the business, maybe even about kind of the succession planning. Do you find that generate generationally, you're you know kind of um, communicating with them in a way that that um yeah, is it meets their needs uh or kind of is where they are from a generational standpoint how do you how do you handle community kind of family communication uh, kind of around the business itself maybe even around succession planning so if you ask steve he will say we're not handling this, the succession talks effectively at this point um that's probably something that we have to take more of an active um, role on. I think the kids know pretty much what we what we have, how we've gotten it, what 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 where we think they want to go with it. Um, but our, I, I don't think we've done a great job with the having the kids actually sit down with us and say, are, do, do, do we think what they're thinking? Do they think what we're thinking? Um, I think they'd all like to keep the real estate, the equities, you know, they'll, 
you know, they'll divide amongst themselves when the time comes. Steve has done unbelievable, you know, financial planning for us. And as far as wealth management goes, we think that's a huge part, you know, of the business, you know, of, of how to have to how to handle it. That's, you know, that's anyone who doesn't have a financial advisor out there is crazy in our mind. You know, it's just things are just changing too rapidly. Mm -hmm. Steve, what uh, you do is uh, you send me an email. We should actually have a meeting with all the three kids in your office. That's been on my to-do list, but we haven't done it. Just send me some dates, and let's that that's something we should do because I think Val and I, Val's trying to wind down. I I think I can do what I'm doing now for the next five to ten years. But you know, I think our game plan is the kids take over everything, and if they want to keep it or sell it, you know, that's up to them. Well, I appreciate it, but you have a distinguished panel here with which you have access to right now. And so feel free to ask Chris or Rich or Jeff. Well, I'm going to I am going to go back to uh, Steve and I'll just tell you, uh, I think you can book anytime you want. Steve's in his office 24 seven. He only leaves. Some people leave to eat. Steve only leaves to play golf and then he goes right back to the office. So you can just book anytime you want. And I think this whole topic, Steve, is really important governance because, you know, just this week, just this morning before the panel, I got a call from a family member, big family business. They have no idea what the rules are going to be, what the rules are, what's going to happen. And this seems to be kind of chronic and epidemic in a family business. So maybe you want to open it up and then everybody can sort of chime in on this whole lack of governance and succession structure. I think you've been su very successful in building your business, but you know, the next generation will come from a different point of view. And I think, I think people have to think it through and probably uh, get a better understanding of what family members really want out of this venture. I use venture as the combined unit. And I think that's going to be a challenge because you have one child that's not in the business and you have two that are in really separate businesses that are combined. Um, one of the lines uh, I've had to use with a client most recently has been who kept mentioning to me equal and I go, it's really not about an equal discussion. It's about a fair discussion. What's fair, what's manageable moving forward? Because sometimes equal can create a lot of problems. Steve, yes. isn't that correct? Absolutely. But understand you've done, these are good problems to work through. You're, you're both healthy. You know, your kids are active, smart. Everyone, each child is smart in their own right. And so I think you're very fortunate. You have great foundation to really make this even more successful. Do you think your third child will come into the business? Um, I don't know. She just she just um got her MBA last year, last this June. So um, whatever she would like to do, she's mm -hmm. actually very funny. She's our youngest child. And at one point, my son asked her, she, she didn't like the job she was working at. This was after, after, um, after college. And he said, why are you, why are you working? You know, if you don't like the job, why are you staying there? And she said, I have to stay gainfully employed. And it was interesting that she used the words great gainfully employed because she had been working for a financial services company, which when Steve put together the um, estate planning, he used the words that in order to get money, you needed to be gainfully employed. <laughs> so she had read how many pages were, I mean, think three, four, 500. Have I ever told you that story, Steve? Um, I don't know if she'd read three, four, 500 pages, whatever Steve had put together. She'd taken a the bottom of her estate planning. So she was very clear that she was going to um, to keep her job just in case something happened to us. She wasn't going to take the chance of being cut out. So I, I, would she come in um, if she wants to? There will be a place for her if she wants to. She's very creative. Um, she's not. She she's really she when it, when it was the two kids think right, she thinks left. Um, it'll be interesting to see whatever whatever she wants to do will be fine with us. And there will be a place for her if she she'd be great in the business if she wanted to join us. 
So you don't really worry about the chemistry. And you know, it's funny in family businesses, you know, at least you, you're a couple, you know, the two of you are married, you work things out together. It's different with siblings, how they make decisions together, especially when you start considering birth order, who came into the business first. Is that something that you are concerned with at all that you've worked on, looked at at all? Um, I'm not because I feel like the kids grew up in the business, whether they were five years old or where they were nine years old, whatever the difference age rise is. I don't know. And um, they always, they, they, they would come to us they would come with us on appointments. They would come with us to, I think I mentioned we own a bar restaurant. Um, they would, they would, you know, they would come, they, they enjoyed the food there. And um, no, I think everybody's been pretty roll up your sleeve from day one. And we, we expected that of them, whatever needed to be done, they were expected to, you know, uh, plug in and help. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris or Rick, are you from Boston? I am. Yeah. So the guy that runs the Paramount restaurant on Charles oh, street. Love it. Been there runs, best. Runs our kitchen. Our food's amazing. And it's just by, <laughs> and, and, and how we put this together is an interesting story, but um, it's been a game changer since uh, uh, the, this guy's name's Diego. The guy he he's, he oversees the kitchen and it's just, he's put us on the map. Fantastic. Um, That's great. I've I've got to I've got to try it out. The Paramount's one of my favorite uh, greasy spoons in Boston. So that's fantastic. <laughs> so you'll um, like our dive then. I, Next time, let's do the radio show. From let's the do let's right. do this there um, on location. I wanted to to note that what I hear in terms of how you've communicated with the family, um, Larry and Val, has just um, it's really really great. And, and I think a lot of other families can learn from what you've done. Um, there's clearly a lot of trust within the family. And that comes from good communication from, you know, empathy and being logical and, you know, explaining why we do things. And um, uh, so I, I just want to congratulate you and, and, and point that out. There are clearly challenges as there always are ahead, but you've, what you've laid down in terms of a good trusting relationship and open communication with your family is gold in the succession planning business. Um, Jeff, wouldn't you agree? Well, I like families like this because it's families like this that, and I think this is good, that keep me out of business. And, <laughs> you know, and I, that's what I want. I want families that cooperate and work well together and can communicate. And, you know, at the root of all family businesses, good or bad is communication and positive right. communication. So this is, seems to be a family that not only communicates, but likes each other. And that helps a lot too. Sometimes liking each other can be a problem. Too much respect. I'm going to ask you one more question for this segment. This is a Rich Hirschen question, but he wanted me to say it for him. Uh, how important are banking relationships for the functioning of your business and the growing of your business? And has it changed over the years? Blair? Uh, we... Um... We we don't borrow money, so I don't know, or we very rarely borrow money. So I, I don't know if all our banking relationships right now happen to be with Hingham Institute, and it, it's 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 more of a deposit a deposit basis. And uh, I that that's for my business, Val. What do you, what's what's your think? What's your uh, I think about banking? So we 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 need we we need the banks, especially in the um in the property management side because all the accounts are separate. We probably have over a hundred and some accounts with different with, with different banks out there. And a bank that's responsible, and again, we were concerned when some of these banks started talking about failing, that was a big concern to us. It, um, you know, to make sure that we had to go in and separate some of these accounts that were, you know, over 250,000. So I think we've looked pretty carefully at the relationships. Um, we use Bank of America, they're easy. We used a we use a company on the West Coast, and then we, as Larry mentioned, we also use Hingham Institute for savings. Um, they're a small bank that gives some personal relationships where we can actually pick up the phone and call somebody if we if we need it. And that's we we've with with what's going on with cybersecurity and fraud and everything else. I think it's really important to be able to put your finger to call somebody quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to turn it over to. Uh... Jillian, and we can continue that discussion in our last and final segment. Jillian. Thank you, everyone. That was a stirring discussion about what it takes to make a successful family business. 
That wraps up part two of this fall 2024 FBA family business panel discussion. Thank you to all our listeners and viewers who have tuned in for this panel. Links will be provided in the video's description below to part one, if you didn't already hear it, and to part three of the discussion to hear more on these topics. And if you're a fan of our videos, please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and press that bell button. And for more on the topic, tune in to our continuing series on family business success. Radio Entrepreneurs is also active on LinkedIn, so follow our page there as well for more business advice and riveting business discussions all year round. Until next time, goodbye and thanks for listening. We'll be back with more stories on Radio Entrepreneurs.